In Carmel, the mountains have always been a symbol of the spiritual life. They represent the place where God and the soul meet without any other creature. The summit of the Mount of Carmel has become a spiritual reality where God dwells alone with the soul. St. John of the Cross explains, the summit of the Mount, which is the high estate of perfection, which we here call union of the soul with God. The mountain is a symbol of mystical union with God. But for Carmelites, it has not always been just a symbol. At one point, the mountain was the reality, physically and spiritually, where Carmelites dwelt, body and soul. Why did Carmelites dwell physically on a mountain? It was an imitation of St. Elias, or Elijah from the Old Testament, who dwelt on the mountain. The institution says, and therefore, especially in the isolation of that mountain, and imitating the example given by that holy and solitary man, Elijah the prophet, these religious men served the Lord God of Israel with all their hearts in the way of life given to Elijah by God. And there manfully resisting the desires of their mind, they overcame evil and by the practice of good works pursued purity of heart. What does dwelling on the mountain physically add to the spiritual symbol? In our modern times, people lose sight of human nature, that is, body and soul. Our bodies are just as much part of who we are as our souls. Our bodies need to experience the solitary wild of the mountains. In fact, there is nothing in our mind that is not first in our senses. We can't fully understand what the ascent of the mountain is, unless we experience it physically. Each year, for a few days, our community retreats into the mountains to experience firsthand everything that a mountain solitude has to offer a Carmelite. These mountains are at an elevation of over 10,000 feet. They are full of wild animals such as elk, bear, moose, mountain lions, wolves. Experience shows that a retreat into the wilderness detaches us from ourselves and all creatures. It teaches the monks to place their hope in God alone. The wilderness shows a man how little he is compared to God. We can get confused about that in our everyday lives. The essence of holiness is an abandonment to God. We cannot even know what this means without experiencing something of how we rely on God for everything. In the wilderness, we experience this total reliance on God. We begin our summer retreat into the mountains at the monastery, where we gather supplies on our pack horses. From the monastery, we ascend the mountain to about a 9,000 foot elevation to the spot we have chosen as home base. This spot is where we will build our tents to dwell in, like the sons of the prophets. One of the tents will serve as a chapel for our masses. On this retreat, we will make a lot of prayer, but we will also do manual labor. We must clear the trails that lead to the summit of the new Mount Carmel. 
This will enable our lay brothers to trail our cows to the summit of the mountain each year, where the cows will pasture. The challenge that the work brings is very rewarding on many levels. We firmly believe in the monastic way of both work and prayer, ora et labora. When we work our bodies in the wilderness with our brothers, it builds manliness and camaraderie. St. John of the Cross condemns effeminacy as he should, as an abominable vice caused by attachment to soft things. Working together in a brotherhood to clear the way to the summit of the mount encourages each of our brothers in the continual effort to root out any effeminacy from our characters, as St. John of the Cross taught all Carmelites to do. But even more importantly, it solidifies each monk as a man of God with a strong character full of virtue. Why does the body matter? Our bodies are the way by which we grow, learn, and act. We have no idea of God, except what we have seen and experienced through our bodies and then meditate on in our souls. In comparison to a great and magnificent mountain, our bodies are as nothing. There were pioneers 150 years ago hiking through the same mountains who have long ago passed away. In the mountains, we get the sense of how before God we are as nothing. It is a very humbling and real experience of our littleness as men. But we also experience the providence of God in the mountains. When we come upon a spring that shoots water out from a rock in the side of a hill, we see how God provides for us and for animals. The water is totally purified and is perfect for us to drink. In the luscious valleys of the mountain, we get a sense of Mary and her motherly care for us. Near the beautiful creeks in these valleys, there is luscious vegetation and flowers. It is a verdant area that is perfect for rest and refreshment where we can pray our little hours of the divine office peacefully and attentively. We get a sense of Mary's love for our souls and nourishment on the spiritual journey. The Institutes of the First Monks says, Mount Carmel offers to the hermit in its solitude, silence, and quiet, in its caves, suitable dwellings, in its woodlands, happiness, on its heights, healthy air, in its herbs and fruits, abundant food, from its springs of flowing water, sweet draughts. For all these reasons, Elijah chose not only to live on that mountain, but also to build a house there dedicated to prayer. As we aim for the summit of the mount, it takes great magnanimity to persevere through the tiredness and the difficulties to reach the summit. To reach the summit of the spiritual life, we must leave all creatures behind in our attachments and be attached to God alone. St. John of the Cross says, Therefore, since there is nothing that equals God, the soul that loves some other thing together with him or clings to it does him a grievous wrong. It is this, too, that is denoted by the command of God to Moses that he should ascend the mount to speak with him. He commanded him to ascend alone. By this he signified that the soul that is to ascend this mount of perfection to communion with God must not only renounce all things and leave them below, but every desire ceases. On the Mount of Carmel, a symbol of our souls, we encounter God free from all creatures. It is by prayer that we enter into our souls, keeping company with God and loving God above all things. Prayer and true virtue always go together. You cannot have the one without the other. St. Teresa of Avila explained that spiritual progress and the virtues always go hand in hand. Both are needed for true growth and holiness. She says, as the foundation of the whole building is humility, the nearer we draw to God, the more this virtue should grow. In our retreat into the mountains, we pray the entire divine office 
two hours of mental prayer, celebrate Mass, and pray the Rosary every day. We strive to remain like St. Elias in the presence of God continually, no matter what we do. The more we are in contact with God during our work times, the easier it is to commune with Him during prayer. The silence and solitude of the mountain draw the monks into deep prayer. As St. Gregory Nazianzus says, Now we recommend you find a place of silence and quiet, so that you may prove yourselves. For the silence and solitude are needed for meditation. As Elijah teaches, he who found full contentment among the rocks of Mount Carmel. St. John of the Cross also recommends the wilderness for prayer. He says, For a matter as intimate as converse with God, one should choose that place that gives sense the least occupation. Wherefore, it is good to choose a place that is solitary and even wild, so that the spirit may resolutely and directly soar upward to God and not be hindered or detained by visible things. For this reason, our Savior was wont to choose solitary places for prayer. He chose places that lifted the soul to God, such as the mountains, which are lifted above the earth. The Carmelite Nicholas the Frenchman said, In the desert, all the elements conspire to favor us. The heavens, resplendent with the stars and planets in their amazing order, bear witness by their beauty to the mysteries higher still. The birds seem to assume the nature of angels and tenderly console us with their gentle caroling. The mountains too, as Isaiah prophesied, drop down sweetness incomparable upon us, and the friendly hills flow with milk and honey, such as is never tasted by the foolish lovers of this world. The roots in their growth, the grass in its greenness, the leafy boughs and trees, all make merry in their own ways as they echo our praise. And the flowers in their loveliness, as they pour out their delicious fragrance, smile their best for the consolation of us solitaries. Here we are at the New Mount Carmel. We are in the middle of our mountain retreat where we imitate the lives of our great fathers, the sons of the prophets, Saint Elijah, and all of his sons. They lived in tents um, in the wilderness, the early prophets, and they would come together for prayers. And um, we pray the full divine office every day we have a, a mass every day um, in the tents behind us. You know, there's one of those tents dedicated to the chapel. So we're doing this video, especially for young guys that are discerning. You probably wonder why we're doing this mountain retreat. It's especially to train us spiritually. So we uh, keep our life of prayer, but at the same time we get out, we blaze trails, Yesterday we blazed a trail all the way to the top of this mountain behind us, the new Mount Carmel. And it's a great experience. I would say, you know, in the church today, everyone is speaking about human formation. And I think that's really what this is all about. A spiritual formation, a human formation to the highest degree. Uh, in this experience, every monk has to push his comfort zone to be very wide because he's going to undergo a lot of experiences. Uh, we get aches in our bodies as we're climbing. We get out of breath because of the elevation. Right here we're probably at 9,000 feet at the top of the mountain behind us. It's about 11,000 feet. So the air is kind of thin. Um, our bodies get pushed to the, to the hilt, you could say. Um, you know, we sleep on the hard ground and uh, monks don't have pillows. Um, we kind of strip away every kind of comfort uh, to help us really grow in manly virtue. And uh, Father Sapphire, what would you say about like the human formation? What, what, did it, what, what does this experience do for the young guys? Got a word to you, Father Pryor. <clears throat> I think that, you know, a lot of times, um, 
We forget that uh, grace builds on nature. And so grace doesn't destroy nature, rather it works with what it has. So when we're able to, you know, strengthen ourselves, um, you know, in various ways naturally, it actually helps us grow in the virtues and helps us to grow spiritually. One of the ways in which I experienced that personally is in, you know, uh, building that trail up to the very top of the mountain. Um, there's something about it where, you know, you get halfway up the mountain, you know you're tempted to stop. You get three quarters of the way up the mountain, you kind of look down at how far you've come and it feels like, okay, well, we're pretty much there, we could stop here, you know, and then, uh, but it takes that extra magnanimity, that extra gift of yourself in order to get to the very, very top. And um, Holy Parents, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, they speak about how so few souls reach the summit of the spiritual life. And here we have a real image in the summit of these mountains and we get a real experience of what that means, that it takes that extra 110% of magnanimity, meaning generosity of soul, in order to get to the very top of the mountain um, and it really trains us to be able to, in the spiritual life, to accept a lot more trials than perhaps we're, we're usually comfortable with. Really, you know, in order to become a great saint, God willing, um, that it, it, it's embracing the cross, it's embracing trials um, wherein we really grow spiritually. So this is really, you know, building up our, our natural side, but then also teaching us a lot of uh, examples of, of uh, you know, a lot of lessons of virtue and holiness for each one of our monks. Yeah, I, I would say it really um, strengthens us in living our vows, mm -hmm. um, stripping your nature, testing your body, uh, helps you really grow in, in living magnanimity and chastity, like resisting every temptation, keeping your mind pure and and holy and dedicated to God at every moment. And even while we're working, we're striving to, to pray. Um, that really is the, the life of a monk, ora et labora. Mm -hmm. So out here it is ora et labora. We pray and then we go do work and then we, we're going to get to the top of the mountain and we will pray our office of vespers at the top. Um, and it, it really uh, establishes us in a, in a very solid living of, of vows, um, obedience. Um, out here we're living strict obedience. Everyone uh, tries to uh, always be in um, communion with the superior who's, who's heading up the blazing of the trails. Um, everyone has to ask permission, like where, where are we going with this trail? Are we blazing it this way? And so it, it is a very good test and in uh, our vows uh, and poverty uh, out here we're experiencing great poverty mm -hmm. um, you you pack on a in your backpack everything your sleeping bag your, your bedroll it's a little tiny military mat about that thick mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really good for us in living the vows uh, on every level um, and like Father Supri was saying that magnanimity it's it's a virtue that's lost in today's world um, you know, men contend toward effeminacy, and in our community, we don't we don't want effeminacy. Um, we want truly manly guys, uh, and we want them to to really push their comfort zone, to push it to the to the max. We you, we want to get it where they hit their limit switch almost, kind of like in the military with the Navy SEALs that they. They do that. So out here we're doing it, but we're doing it in the way of a, of a Carmelite monk. And uh, I think it's really a good good experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the uh, word virtue actually is, uh, comes from the Latin word for man, which is vir. Um, you know, it means man, manliness or strength. So virtue is really, it draws out the manliness in us. Um, difficult situations where we have to, you know, maybe we're hiking up the mountains near near other monks and we have to keep that charity towards one another, even if, if we're pushed a little bit harder, you know, because something's difficult. 
Um, it really expands our hearts and makes us stronger men and more charitable. And, and that's what virtue is all about. It's all about that strength of character in order to be kind to others, in order to, you know, have a Christian love for others. Yes. Yeah, the camaraderie out here is, is really great. Um, the monks, they live really great charity towards each other, and they're always so self-sacrificing. You know, I say, hey, will someone go go uh, blaze that trail through that part of the woods over there? They all want to raise their hands and go tackle it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no complaining, no wimpiness, great manliness. That's yes. what we're striving for. And in the spirit of uh, all of our great saints, our Holy Mother St. Teresa, our Holy Father St. John of the Cross, St. Elijah, St. Elisha, and all those sons of the prophets.